This is Father Jim Corda. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this morning is Father Jim Corda, president of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. I am Ron Puhala from Holy Family Parish. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers, Tilly Bowona Valenta. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's nice to be with you today as we gather to celebrate God's love. So let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us join the angels in their hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we, bless you, you, we adore, adore you, we glorify you, you, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King O oh God, Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, Father you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crops of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to, the, to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. To God. 
The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted, you drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea, its shoots as far as the river. The vineyard, the vineyard of the Lord, Lord is, is the house, house of Israel. Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays its waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard, the vineyard of, of the Lord, Lord is, is the house of Israel. Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about all these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to grow and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and the third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, throughout his public life, Jesus made it very clear that Israel had failed in their purpose as God's people. 
In today's gospel reading, he told a story to the chief priests and elders, which amounted to a warning that they were actually running out of time. The story was about a landowner who planted and prepared a vineyard, leased it out to tenant farmers, and then went on an extended journey. Now when harvest time came, he sent servants to collect his share of the grapes, but the tenants refused to pay. Instead, they attacked the servants, beating one, stoning another, and killing a third. The owner patiently tried sending more servants, but the results were the same. Finally, he sent his son, thinking that they would respect him, but he was wrong. The tenants killed him as well. Then Jesus asked his audience, what do you suppose the owner will do to those tenants when he returns? And they finished the parable by passing judgment on themselves. Jesus summed it all up by saying, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to others who will yield a rich harvest. Now, all of that raises in my mind some questions. Now, what did God expect from Israel? What did God want from them? And where and how had Israel failed? I think we need to examine those questions because we, God's people, like to think of ourselves as his chosen ones. So what does God expect from you and me? Are we fulfilling our purpose with God? I think if we look at our gospel parable, it will give us at least partial answers to those questions. First, I think that God wants us to recognize our position in this world. Remember, we are only junior partners. Not one thing in this vineyard we call the earth belongs to us. Everything we see around us is ours to use only for a short time. Ultimately, everything belongs to God. Our reason for being is not to pretend to own the vineyard. All ownership rests with God alone. And God expects us to recognize that simple fact. I think another thing that God expects of us is to understand our responsibility to him. Now the owner of the vineyard did his best to collect what was fair to him. Now when he failed in that purpose, there was only one thing left to do, to repossess the land and lease it out to more trustworthy tenants. Jesus is reminding us that privilege carries with it definite obligations. We are responsible to God for what we do with what we have. Look at your family, for example. As your children grow up and become more responsible, you gradually give them more privileges and more freedom. But when they show themselves to be irresponsible, if you are a wise parent, you will take some of that freedom away from them until they can handle it. You see, this vineyard we live in belongs to God. These lives that we are living belong to God. We are accountable to God for what we do with both. I think the final thing that God expects is that we share with others what God has entrusted to us. You know, that is written throughout the entire Bible. One of the oldest laws of Israel was that when they harvested their grain, they were to leave the corners of the fields for strangers who might happen by who were hungry. And it so happened that God gave us those blessings so we can share those blessings with others. The Israel in which Jesus worked and ministered had forgotten that. They had come to think of themselves as God's favorites, and they turned their backs on the rest of the world. So the vineyard was taken from them, and we are those tenant farmers. I wonder if we will be any wiser or do any better. 
Most of us, if we think about it, are in a place of great privilege, especially when we compare ourselves to the rest of the world. We have an opportunity to do something good and useful with our lives. God help us to rise to the challenge, to seize the opportunity, and to fulfill God's expectations. Together now let us profess the faith that we all share. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of heaven, heaven and, and earth, of all, all things visible and, and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly now let us present to God our special petitions. For the church, that we may be made worthy of producing good fruit to build up the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those living in regions of the world marked by ongoing hostilities and resentments, that they may find in their hearts a way to reconciliation, acceptance, and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That we may foster and encourage a true and lasting respect for all human life, especially for those most vulnerable and those at the peripheries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who harvest in fields and on farms, in orchards and vineyards, that they may be paid a just wage and treated humanly, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our parish communities, that we may work together to bear fruit that helps our neighbor materially and spiritually, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God in heaven, we ask that responsibly we share the blessings that you have given us in our world and one day come to the fullness of life in your kingdom. We make this prayer in the spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ your Son. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. 
And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the praise of you, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gift of his blessing, amen. amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love, amen. amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life, amen. amen. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares could destroy, be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith.